everybody. Um, my name is Shanna Smith, for those of you who don't know me. Second year marine science student, student doing marine uh, work science. Um, in front of you, you'll find my proposal booklet and also access to my weekly site via the iPad. Also, on the table next to Colin, there's a number of papers um, which I've used for all of my research, in case you want to take a look at those as well. I'm proposing to look at um, abundance and diversity of zooplankton in Cornwall. I've chosen this because plankton is a key factor in the marine environment. My title is Neuritic Zooplankton of the Southwest of Britain, Northern and Southern Current Flow Differences. A variety of references have been used in my research. Two of the key references that I've been using are Field Manual, Field Manual by Goswani. In this, they talk about the collection methods, preservation, and process sampling. Also, a review of long-term research in the Western English Channel by Langmead and others discusses history, previous findings, and further goals, which include maintaining research for, future, for the future through several periods of significant change. Right, I will need a number of materials for my project to be carried out. Um, the main ones are a plankton net to conduct my sampling, and um, when I get into the lab with my samples, I'll need a bog or off tray for the abundance count, and then Sedgwick rafters for my diversity counts. Um, a number of other stuff will be used um, with the temperature probe and the refractometer. I'll be calculating the temperatures and salinities, and that will be analysed as well. There are a number of associated external bodies that could be interested in the research that I carry out. Um, Sapphos being the first one. That's the Amsterdam Foundation for Ocean Science. They've been conducting plankton research since 1931 in the North Sea and the North Atlantic. Since 1931, they've been becoming more and more involved in external and internal um, international projects. The MBA, Marine Biological Association, was formed in 1884. They've conducted a number of projects, especially focusing on ecosystems and environmental change, which plankton are particularly good indicators for. Both of these places are actually based in Plymouth, so they're local to us, um, and they may be interested in the work that I carry out. Okay, a number of papers are, have been found. Um, a full list is found within the booklet and on the weekly site, and you've got access to a few there. Um, as previously mentioned, um, the paper by Langmead um, is very important to the work that I'll be doing. Um, there's a review, a review on the Western English Channel, and he suggests in it ongoing research and has data that can be carried out, um, like continued within my work. Okay, when I collect um, my samples, I'll be using a kayak. The reason for that is just practical and financial reasons mainly. Um, I'll be towing a practical net on the back. And I've collected a one litre sample. This one litre sample has passed through 45 cubic metres of water and that was um, all calculated with a predefined distance right from the start. Um, once I've collected my sample, the preservation is using formalin and glycerol. Um, this keeps the sample fresh and stops it from deteriorating. Um, the samples are then processed using um, the Bogroff tray and Cedric Rafter, which I discussed earlier, and the samples are stained using aniline blue. Once I've um, put all the processing through, they will, I will use Malvern EU as my statistical test. That's, this has been used in Langley's paper and is used to measure unpaired and non-parametric data. I will further look at other stats tests just to um, provide more accuracy in some of my results, like my um, temperature and salinity. There are a number of stats tests that we're looking at, um, but the main one is Malvern EU. I predict that there will be no difference in the abundance and diversity at each coast. Um, so, there are my results. Okay, <coughs> a full ethical review can be found within the booklet. It's quite lengthy. Um, I will be removing species from their environment um, and they will be euthanized. So, there is potential loss of vulnerable and rare species, which unfortunately can't be prevented. Okay, sketch of operations. Again, full one is in the weekly site and in the booklet. I will finish my collections at the end of November. Processing will continue through until January, and all further work will be due one month prior to the end deadline. My contingency plan, if any 
thing was to go wrong, my samples deteriorated, I lost my samples, or I couldn't collect my samples. Um, previous data collected through the MBA would be used um, just for the statistical tests, and um, I've just used that data. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Yeah, go on then. Um, <laughs> you, you might have already mentioned this, but I'm just genuinely interested in this. So if you could recap it, if, like, if I've just I'll try. missed it. Um, the differences of plankton within certain areas yeah. would indicate what um, there are other different things that they would indicate? Yes, it could in indicate um, difference in temperature. Um, the I'm particularly going to be looking at the currents um, and the. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, the current flow off. I'll be using a site called. Um, I've only looked at it a couple of times. Um, Nodas, I think it is. They've got every week um, of the year, they take all the thermal um, circulations, all the currents, all the tides, and um, create maps for that. I'll be using those maps um, and predicting from those what plankton I should be picking up. And it will mean that. In theory, I predict that there will be no difference. But for example, if um, a current or a wind or, or a wind channel came through, it could push more nutrients up onto the north coast than it would the south coast. So I might pick up differences there, and um, that would relate to fish stocks and just life in general on the sea. And just to follow on from that, what variables are you expecting to influence that? Because um, temperature and yeah, the temperature, the salinity. Um, the place I'm doing off Falmouth is, because Falmouth is close to an estuary, I could potentially pick up some estuarine plankton rather than sea plankton, whereas on the north coast it's very in, in the open that the sample is coming from. Uh, yeah, temperature salinity, winds, the axis, all of that currents, that's all the stuff that will affect it. So I'm the same thing, are you monitoring depth of your profile in your sample? I'm not because I'm not doing a depth sample. The um, plankton net is going on the back of the kayak and it's just um, like just underneath the surface. Okay, so if I was using the depth, I would have carried it. Okay. And using the kayak, does that prove to be interesting? Yes, that is interesting. Um, it was suggested to use a kayak just because the um, potential of using boats out of the harbour, I might, for the cost of it and the chances of not being able to get up, go out, it was. Um, more viable to use my kayak. Looking back on it, it's hard to use the kayak because the plankton that actually uses the sit works as a sea anchor. Yeah. But it's been successful, so. I have to say that the, the little research I've managed to do into this, I came to the same conclusion that you've got absolutely bang on paper. Well, you start to you one more question. I was just looking at your risk assessments. Yeah. How risk assessment for a lab that you don't have for sampling when you're out using the kayak? I do have a risk assessment for my sampling, but it wasn't printed for the booklet. Sorry. Okay. I will update the movie site as soon as possible. Fantastic.